Hi, welcome to another episode of Tech Talk with Hughes Performance. I'm Pete Nichols. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a little more in-depth look into racing specific custom-built torque converter construction. Specifically, I'd like to focus on the areas of torque converter ballooning and anti-ballooning properties. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button in your lower right corner. If you could like and share our videos, you'd be doing us a big favor. You can also check us out on social media. We have a Facebook page and a website, HughesPerformance.com. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. So what we have here is a variety of different torque converter components that comprise uh, some of our Pro Series and Pro SSX torque converters. Uh, we do both series in a fully welded converter and bolt together converter. Um, and all of our Pro Series and Pro SSX torque converters feature anti-ballooning properties. If you've been in the industry long or been into race cars or high horsepower street cars, you've probably heard terms thrown around like torque converter ballooning and anti-ballooning plates, so on and so forth. And what happens when a torque converter balloons is the converter assembly here actually will physically balloon and change dimension. And that happens when a torque converter gets radically, radically overheated, or you have a torque converter design that just isn't strong enough for the application it's being used in. Uh, you can have a transmission malfunction where a boost valve or pressure regulator may stick and you have a massive spike in line pressure. That can potentially balloon a converter. Um, so it can happen for any number of reasons. That being said, torque converter ballooning really isn't all that commonplace these days. Uh, converter build techniques have come a long way over the years. Material quality has improved. Uh, we have more knowledge about converter function than we've ever had. Um, so it's just really almost a non-issue. Uh, side note, uh, engine builders and transmission builders frequently love to blame the torque converter. It's always the converter's fault if you have an engine thrust bearing failure or a premature transmission failure. And the reason for that is most guys don't know what's going on inside a converter or can't open it to see that there actually isn't anything wrong with the converter and the converter never had anything to do with your engine or transmission failure. So. If you're dealing with a situation where you've had a thrust bearing related failure or uh, you know you wiped out a pump gear or a transmission front pump or the transmission just failed and your builders automatically just telling oh it's the converter's fault or the converter's ballooned 90 percent of the time that's not actually accurate these days uh, converters are very strong it takes a lot of abuse uh, a lot of force to balloon one or just a really low quality build. So what we do to combat converter ballooning varies depending on the type of converter that we're building. Uh, this is a basic street style nine inch converter. Um, it has a billet steel cover that you can see here. This is very resistant to ballooning. Uh, we also have fabricated steel covers with welded mounting rings. This is a steel cover for a street style nine inch converter. Uh, you can see that it's a pretty basic steel stamping. It's got a welded mounting ring, uh, has a forged steel bearing block incorporated into the cover and of course the converter pilot. Uh, this cover does not have an anti-ballooning plate. Anti-ballooning plates just aren't necessary in a pretty significant majority of street oriented torque converter builds. Uh, towing converters, converters that are designed to increase fuel efficiency. Um, it's just not a necessary feature. Um, so we try to keep the cost down where we can by not overbuilding converters uh, wherever that might be appropriate. Alternatively, you have our Pro Series fabricated steel cover here and you can see compared to the other one, you have an anti-ballooning plate attached to the cover here. This is a thick steel washer that's physically welded to the cover both on the OD of the washer and the ID of the washer. This is a really common feature in a lot of custom built converters or racing oriented converters. Um, there's different ways to go about this. There's all different kinds of style of ballooning plates. We have several samples right here. You can see we're basically just dealing with a thick steel washer, typically stamped or flame cut, uh, water jet or laser out of mild steel. 
most manufacturers use ballooning plates anywhere from 3 16 to 5 16 of an inch thick. Uh, you can see you've got a quarter inch washer here. You have a larger 3 16 thick washer here. This particular anti-ballooning plate you can see has been pressed and formed to fit the specific contours of a unique cover. So we basically design our anti-ballooning plates on our fabricated covers to fit the specific core that we're working with. Not all cores uh, work with every particular style of ballooning plate, so we actually have even more washer designs than this. Uh, we just have that out as a sample. Uh, another feature that you can incorporate in terms of anti-ballooning plates is incorporating a washer on the back side of your turbine assembly. You can see the washer, we've heli-arced it here on the outside and on the inside, whereas you have a turbine without that anti-ballooning plate. It's not as critical to have an anti-ballooning plate on the back of the turbine, and in fact, most manufacturers don't include this feature. On our Billet Pro Series and Pro SXX converters that incorporate this one-piece CNC machine billet steel cover or a billet aluminum covers, we frequently like to add an extra anti-ballooning plate here simply because we want to give you the absolute strongest, most bulletproof product that you can possibly buy. Uh, this particular turbine goes in one of our Sportsman Series converters. Uh, originally known as the Pro 2 series. Uh, that's a lighter duty spec, um, so it doesn't necessarily have to have quite as much of the overkill features. When we get to the impeller side of the torque converter, you have your, again, a street style converter where you can see the outside of the impeller, the pump hub, and the pump hub is just welded right to the bearing block inside the impeller. So no anti-ballooning plate, again, this is more of an entry-level street converter, so the anti-ballooning plates aren't really necessary. Uh, this converter isn't going to be used with a trance brake. Um, if it's being used with a power adder, it's only going to be used with, you know, maybe 100 or 150 horsepower worth of nitrous or a very low boost setting like with a mini blower. So uh, anti-ballooning plates really just aren't necessary in that type of application. We have our race converter impeller over here. This is one of our Pro Series builds. And you can see, again, the large welded washer that is the anti-ballooning plate. We welded on the OD and the ID. Of course, you have the forged steel bearing block. You can see the three-piece bearing assembly inside here that the stator rides on. So these anti-ballooning plates just prevent converter flex. It prevents the cover from flexing. It prevents the impeller from flexing. They can withstand a lot higher charge pressure. They can withstand a lot more heat. Uh, trans brake use generates an incredible amount of shock loading to the torque converter. So these features are necessary when you're going all out with a trans brake equipped transmission. Um, max effort street strip car, especially with power adders as prevalent as those are today. Uh, chances are if you're anywhere exceeding much over six to 650 flywheel horsepower, you really should probably be looking at one of our Pro Series converters, one of our Sportsman converters, or even one of our new Pro SSX converters, rather than sticking with something that's just off the shelf or a basic catalog recommendation. Alternately to the fabricated steel covers, we have our CNC machine billet steel cover. This is machined out of a solid chunk of steel. Uh, you don't see a welded anti-ballooning plate on here because we incorporate the anti-ballooning properties into the cover when it's originally engineered and drawn up for machining. So this section here is significantly thicker than what you're going to have in a steel stamping. So this basically has anti-ballooning characteristics already incorporated into it, hence the lack of a welded plate. Uh, you can see inside the cover it's fully contoured machined to reduce weight wherever it's not needed and it also has everything necessary to properly fit the turbine and allow the bearing to ride between the turbine and the cover. We have these billet covers for a variety of different builds. This particular model you can see is a six lug for a GM product. Uh, we do these billet covers for Fords and Chryslers. Um, we can get into some import stuff where it's needed, depending on the type of core that's being used. And we can incorporate different bolt patterns when necessary. So if you have a unique combination that uh, you don't see anything in our catalog for, 
definitely give us a call because we have some flexibility in what we can do with these covers to fit maybe a more unique engine and transmission combination. The other option that we have is our billet aluminum option. This is a bolt together torque converter. This one's actually in the midst of its construction process. It's going to be used in a pretty cool project over in the United Arab Emirates. It's going behind a quad turbocharged V16 LS engine. Uh, this is built out of a Nissan 11 inch core. This is the core to use for extreme high horsepower applications. Uh, we have the steel impeller. Again, you can see the anti ballooning plate welded here. And we have the CNC machined billet aluminum cover. And again, this incorporates uh, much thicker material in this area, hence the lack of an actual welded anti-ballooning plate. Um, even though it's aluminum, very, very strong. It's a very high quality grade of aluminum. It receives a specific heat treat. Uh, we have steel thread inserts and in all the mounting points. So durability is really not an issue, even though this is a softer parent material that you're working with. Just so you can take a peek inside what's going on here and how a bolt together goes together. You have the impeller. You have the weld ring. This will actually be welded to the outside of the impeller during final assembly. Of course, you have the stator assembly that we talked about in a previous episode. You have your turbine. We have a roller bearing on the back side of the turbine, and then of course the CNC machined cover. On our ProMod lockup torque converters, we also incorporate the bolt together design with the aluminum front half, and there's actually a clutch housing built into the cover uh, that incorporates a lockup clutch pack. We'll come to that style of converter in a later episode, so make sure you check that out when it's posted. We offer the bolt together options in the aluminum steel half and half construction as well as all steel construction where we have the bolt together ring incorporated to our billet steel cover and as well as our fabricated covers we can incorporate the bolt together ring on the fabricated stamp steel cover as well so we actually have a variety of bolt togethers to suit just about any budget out there when it comes to your race car or max effort street strip car so that pretty much covers ballooning and converter anti-ballooning characteristics and properties um, again just be wary if somebody's telling you you've ballooned your converter send it to a professional and have it checked uh, we work on not only our stuff but everybody else's converter out there so if you think you have a problem with a ballooned converter we're going to shoot you straight uh, if it's not ballooned it doesn't matter if we built it or somebody else built it we're going to tell you it's not ballooned and you have problems elsewhere um, one other thing just to touch base on, uh, there's a lot of misinformation about a converter being able to balloon and then return to shape in a running condition, and that's just not true. Um, if a converter balloons, it's a permanent condition. Uh, you're going to have increased clearance inside the converter between the impeller, the stator, and the turbine because the converter is physically swollen and an axial layout. Um, you're could potentially damage a thrust bearing in the engine. You could damage a pump gear set. If you have a ballooned converter, it's gonna show a trail of progressive damage that's gonna help you determine that it's ballooned. If somebody's telling you that the converter's ballooning and returning and that's what's causing whatever problem you're having, it just doesn't happen. It's a permanent condition. You do get normal expansion and contraction as metal heats up and cools down. But in a steel converter, uh, whether it's welded or bolt together, we're only talking a few thousandths of an inch of expansion and contraction. If your pilot is set up properly to your crankshaft, that's floating inside the crankshaft, and that's giving you a little bit of flex room as far as that expansion and contraction goes, that's never gonna cause an issue and you're never gonna get away from it. As metal gets hot, it expands. In the aluminum converter, you get a little bit higher growth rate, but again, we're only dealing with thousandths of an inch. So. Yeah, that uh, pretty much covers it. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, if you could do us a favor and hit that subscribe button, check us out on social media. We're uploading Facebook content daily. Uh, shoot us an email through our website, hughesperformance.com. Uh, 
If you have anything that you'd like to see discussed in these episodes, be sure to drop us a line in the comment section below. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for tuning in.